What I want to do is hit a little bit of boring lecture stuff to leave you guys. I shouldn't call it boring. It's, it's negative. Um, to finish up on some of the lecture stuff I need to cover for some of the foundational material, um, I want to show you something, though, if I have internet access. Maybe I should just stop clicking. Oh, there we go. In the folder for this course, under the lectures directory, what we started the day off with was tutorial one. We're going to take a quick look at tutorial number two, which is a really quick one, actually. If you're still having problems with uh, some of the projects and some of the activities, just a refresher so you can figure out where to find this stuff. There's notes on the install. There's also, if your Java skills are not, not quite there yet, there's three little mini lectures on Java programming. Not a substitute for a Java class, because I'm not really teaching Java programming. I'm just basically trying to get you familiar, at least at, for day one, familiar <coughs> and semi-proficient with what you're doing with Android. <laughs> day two, we're going to focus on building apps after app after app. It's going to be a major app production day. So I want you to have a working system by the beginning of the day. If you already have a working system and you're bored tonight and you want something to do, <laughs> you're probably not going to want to want to look at this stuff again. But you can, or within the next couple of days after the weekend or something, and if you really want to refresh your the Java 1, Java 2, Java 3, in here is just bare bones. Not a complete course, but it's enough to get you through with Java. There's some other information in here as well that I'm going to go through. Maybe not all of it this weekend, but it's not a bad way of looking for stuff. It's all by topic. It's all categorized by topic. And then we also have all of the video lectures that are being recorded. So at the end of tonight, I'm actually going to stick it at the high level. So anyone who came in late or something, it'll be up here right underneath the syllabus. So you'll see everything from today. So everything that is going on has been recorded. So if you had to leave the room and you came back and you were halfway through step number whatever and you missed it or something just didn't work for you or you want to do it all over again you can do it all over again so you can relive today as many times as you want hopefully um, so we did this one here and this tutorial was in the lectures directory I won't do this tomorrow I'll just point to it this is the one we did so we'll take a look at number two Number two is an easy looking thing. It says hello on it and it's building hello world and it's kind of giving us a, a review of what we did with the hello world app. But it has a few different things in here I kind of wanted to point out. Just to, it's like, it brings a nice closure to hello world because you should have a working hello world that uses intents actually and that uses um, two activities instead of one. So it's kind of a feature rich. It's an advanced level hello world. This is the hello world when you just run it, right? So what did we do just to refresh your memory and kind of reinforce some points? We created a very simple application. We ran it on a real device. We ran it on an emulator. We examined the structure of it. We created the AVDs. What you really want to get at it today is this. What you really want to walk home with is kind of a, a clear lay of the land in terms of what you're doing. So we know we're working with Java source code at this point. And we know we have Java classes, and we're building different classes for different activities. And those different activities that we're using can work with different menus and also different layouts. We don't call them views in Android. We call them layouts. Layouts are XML files. We have XML is used for everything. So when you go into add an XML file, you have to know if you're adding a menu, a layout, a string. We have, we're going to look at strings tomorrow. But these are the components. So if you, you know, I highly encourage you to kind of take what you've seen so far. Not that you're going to want to do this tonight, but probably, you know, a couple days after the workshop. Um, start adding stuff like what I do with that label. Make the button change the label and then put another component on there and make the components do something and then maybe add another activity and change the manifest so it loads the new activity and the new activity calls the other activity and maybe you know put some images on there or something and you know play around with it cuz that's the way how you learn something you can't learn an interface by listening to someone talk about it you actually have to get your hands dirty on it which is why I sort of prefer the tutorial based kind of learning technique but 
Okay, mind, if you go into lecture number two, you'll see an explanation for everything in here, the Java code for the activity, the generated files, the layouts, the activities, everything is, is kind of well organized. This Android manifest, as I mentioned before, is kind of like the contract for the, uh, for the class, or, excuse me, for the project. Manifest is going to have, and we're going to see it tomorrow, today we saw intents, and the intents was registering multiple activities. Why do we need to do that? Because we actually have to give permission for one activity to call another activity. <laughs> and we have to give permission for the process to load the activity, which is why we have to list it in here. And we list it under the application, and we categorize it as an activity in this particular case. And then we put multiple activities in here. We say, which one do we want to start with, which is what we did in that first example. And here we're going to say we're going to start with Hello Android, but we started with a different one. So tomorrow what we're going to do is add permissions to this. Add more intents, add more permissions. And kind of see how that works. Because everything's going to need, you know, turn on Wi-Fi, turn off Wi-Fi. Um, all those different things you can do. Uh, but here's kind of the thing we sort of looked at programmatically with the buttons. When I showed you the on pause, on event, you know, on create, on pause, on resume, on destroy. If, if you take home anything, take this home, this is the activity life cycle. So if you look in these little boxes, it's probably hard to see it. It says on start, on resume, uh, on freeze, on pause, on stop, on destroy, uh, on create. So people that understand this understand the big picture and they're able to write really robust applications. <laughs> so even in buttons, we had all those little methods in there. Well, they were in there to kind of show you that when these events occur, the method bodies get executed. So if the program is resumed, you can put up a little toast message that says, and we were logging it, we were logging those messages, but you could put a little toast message up that says, hey, you're not using me, why don't you close me instead of, reason, or <laughs> instead of pausing me, or something, or hey, I'm still running, leave me alone, or, you know, it's kind of like you can tell what the user is doing. So when the application starts, the yeah, onCreate always runs first, which is why we're using that as main. So in the main, well, I'm going to call it main, I'm going to call it onCreate now. But we're putting all the code in there for everything. So that's really going to be the biggest diehard kind of method that's the most important. And then we're going to have certain things happen to it. You know, after the onCreate, we have an onStart. But do we have to program the onStart? No. The onCreate is really the only method we really need, so it shows up in the template. So on a start might be for a different activity, or it might be for, you know, on the creation, we're going to start something. We can break it out into two. On the resume, we may never have a resume if we never have a pause. Um, on a restart, we're never going to have a restart if we don't have an on stop, if the application doesn't stop. Um, on a freeze, that's really hard to determine what's going to happen with that because the app's frozen. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that don't deal, they'll deal with the on create and maybe the on destroy because if it's on destroy, you can clean up the mess, clean up the garbage if you want, but you don't really need to because the JVN's going to do it for you. So the most important one is the on create. Whether you'll use the other life cycle stages, and these are life cycle stages. Because, you know, it's like you get born, and then you do this, and you do that, and you do this. Eventually, you get destroyed <laughs> as an app. The life of an app is kind of deadful. You know? Or you hang around for a very, very long time. You're constantly really running. So we can make apps into services, and that's what ends up happening with them. We can make them into apps that run in the background. We can do all sorts of different things, and we can control the activities. So as an example, if something is on pause... Your activity is no longer visible to the user. Should it still be consuming resources? No. So a lot of people do this to be to play nice, because you know you only have so much memory on the device. So when you run the app, you want to make sure that your app is being playing friendly with everything else. If you're opening up a lot of resources and using a lot of stuff, and your app is on pause right now, let that stuff go, <laughs> because then people aren't going to complain. Every time I load this app, man, my whole phone runs slow. It just kills the kills my performance, and the app's not even running. The app's on, so, so they'll uninstall your app. So, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, which plays differently than other devices. Yeah. iOS devices, it's managed entirely by the device, not by the app. 
So here we have control from it within the app on the Android world. So Android activity is focused on the single thing that can the user can do. So most applications have multiple activities that are associated with it, as we've seen. So activities start other activities, as we saw. So here's an activity where we have a contacts. We'll have a contact app we're going to build tomorrow where we can edit a contact, put a contact in. And then here we have a phone list where we can uh, put some stuff in. So we can actually take an add app. We can actually add contacts to the contact list from another activity, from another screen. We can do all sorts of stuff. So uh, I don't have to do this, but this is the uh, the text actually we looked at in that first Hello World app that we built. This is the uh, extending it to the text view to make, uh, in fact, I actually did this to set text to a label. This is a different version of Hello World where we're looking at the inherited activity class up here and then we're looking at the import of a widget for text view. We call them widgets. They're imported libraries. In the widgets we have uh, everything. Everything that appears in the uh, interface builder, um, in the XML interface builder, we have widgets, text views, edit views, and stuff like that. So we run it, we get this little app, if we run this example. Um, down here at the bottom, we further, we have a redirection of the string concept. I see some, a lot of people playing around with strings today. <laughs> Didn't actually hit strings yet. Gonna hit strings tomorrow, first thing, because I see everyone wants to use strings. Don't know why, because it's easier just to hard set the code. But we have strings in here, in fact, if we go out here we have strings that we can set and uh, the theme for tomorrow is kind of going in a little bit deeper in terms of some of these features because we don't have to waste half the day with installation problems <laughs> so <clears throat> but uh, strings are preset I'll just let that load in the background strings are preset we load them up then we can change them as I was mentioning before and it's in the strings.xml file and here's the source code for one where we're defining hello or defining app name. I think people are playing with them because, you know, the default template comes with a couple of strings defined. So you're going to play around with it, uh, you know, because you think that's how you're going to change the label. But those are just the strings. Just because you change the string, it might change the text field on the label if it's using that string. <laughs> if it's not using that string, it's not going to, you know, whatever you change in here doesn't really matter. In fact, you can have a million strings in here. And unless you're using them, you're not going to notice anything in the app. So, now we got uh, the hello world.java. The R, remembering the R.java file, something you're never going to edit, but it's automatically generated for you when you run it. We don't have to run through the screen here. <coughs> we can introduce a bug. And uh, we didn't do this, but we could do this. And you can do this easily by introducing a bug. This one here is on the uncreated set. You know, object zero is equal to null, and then you know zero dot two string. Well, that's gonna that's gonna be a bug. It's gonna be a source code bug. And if it's a source code bug, when we run it, we're gonna get that nasty thing that shows up. In fact, I have a, I have Eclipse actually loaded. Let me show you what happens. And this is one of the most this is one of the biggest complaints we get actually. Um, we have this beautifully running program, and it has a bug. And the bug in it, I'm going to go back to hello again because it happens to be open. I'm just going to pick one of these. Don't do this unless you want the, your program to crash. But uh, now on create, I'm going to do this silly logic that's going to compile correctly. I'm going to create an object here in the on create and uh, paste in this uh, kind of okay code. Just creating a generic object O and then going O dot string. Well, we can't do a dot string. You can't convert null to string. It does just this doesn't work. So if I run the sucker, whoops, I forgot I closed everything down. It's okay, I have virtual box. <laughs> and I noticed the thumb drive made it back. If anyone still wants it, I still got virtual box. It'll be a miracle if everyone actually got their system set up today. Let's see. This is running on the slow side because I have my recording software running again. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens and then you're going to know why this is so frustrating. We have a bug in here. We're not going to get anything. It's just going to come up. And it's going to show us this little exception. It's going to go away. Nothing's going to happen. 
In fact, we're going to notice in the debug window, nothing's going to happen either. It's just going to not work. It's going to be an unthrown exception. Well, how can you throw an exception on that? It's a logic error. So usually this ends up happening when you misspell the name of an intent. When you not normally going to create an object, set it to null, and then, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, and then try and uh, convert it to string or something. So I introduced this bug by putting this code in here. So if I run this method here, I run this project, oops, I'm going to have to accept a prompt first. Here it is. <coughs> I have to open it up quickly because I want you to see the bug. Sorry, the application hello again process <laughs> failed. It stopped unexpectedly. Please try again. Uh, and then, you know, you have to force quit. And then you go over here and you go, what happened? And you look over here and you go, oh, bunch of stuff. But does it really tell me anything about the object that I created that I set to null that I tried to run a two-string on? Nope. It's just going to give me a bunch of red stuff that's not going to make any sense at all. Actually, it's going to say that performed it performed performed it, and it didn't launch it. It stopped. So I suspect that some of you who are having problems today could have also had a problem that was caught unexpectedly like this that could have, like, thrown, and it was because you had a typo. It's usually, if you get this, it, this error message that comes up with that unexpected in it, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Put a log in and see how far the log got. <laughs> see how far your code got. I can't tell you how many times I have thrown away the application completely and started fresh because I just cannot figure out where. After a couple weeks I'm trying to figure out where this bug is, <laughs> because that message isn't going to tell me. The log isn't going to tell me. I'm going to go online and Google it. It's not going to tell me. There's no escape from that one. It's not going to work. Technically, you are starting it in debug mode. If you keep the log on the bottom, and you uh, you could, you could. There's definitely a lot more to debugging that you can do on that. Unfortunately, it depends on how far it's going to get in terms of um, when it when it's going to stop. Uh, this stopped on the onCreate. Sometimes you'll see half the menu up there, you'll see half the screen, and then you'll see this unexpected error. The problem is, even the unexpected exceptions, most of the time, aren't going to get caught. <laughs> so at this point, you have to go through, and I'm going to pull this out, actually, because later on I'm going to go, how come this thing is giving me this unexpected error? But this is actually, hello again is actually kind of a repeat, so I don't really need it. So, um, Long story short, probably the worst type of message to kind of to troubleshoot. So, And unfortunately, there's no way of avoiding that one. It's just going to come up, and then you're going to have an issue with it. So force quit. So, say so I promise that was a very short lecture. <laughs> so I just wanted to recap a few concepts. All right. So tomorrow we have a full day. I think tonight is daylight savings. Today is daylight savings. It happens on Saturday night. I thought. Here, let me stop this video here. And we'll look up daylight savings.